Hey everybody, here's another a work in progress. This is a Dreamforge Leviathan from the 15 millimeter range of theirs. Uh, but um, if you remember, let me bring this over. I, in one of my previous videos, I actually have uh, another one I had done up. Uh, this one was done in for GW colors and you know, it could be used as uh, one of the smaller titans like a knight i think they call them the knight titans so uh, i'd gotten two of these these are the resin versions um, <coughs> the plastic version should be out soon in the next few months but uh, actually i'm looking forward to they're going to have these in the 28 millimeter version uh, pretty soon which are about the size of a warhound titan those should be coming in in the next month so I will definitely be having some videos of those. Um, just to give you a comparison here, I'll put a, this is one of the 28 millimeter figures. Uh, this is uh, an Eisenkern, this is also from Dreamforge, this is an Eisenkern uh, Trooper. And again, you also see those in one of my other previous videos. I'll take a look at them there. Uh, but yeah, this this is about the Crusader Titan here that I'm painting up. And this is also going to be in Eisenkern colors. Uh, this I took the coloring basically off of the the site of uh, for Dreamforge, uh, the ones he has now. Now he's not quite like I said; he's a work in progress. I have to do the shield and some <coughs> weathering. Uh, the one big difference with this one between the other one I did is this one I've illuminated. The eyes and the stacks will light up. And I'll show you that in just a second. These are just, uh, these are like the smoke stacks here. So I did some cotton and uh, with the smoke and then <coughs> the LEDs and the stacks actually light up. and. Looks like there's a fire burning inside and up through the smoke, so it looks pretty cool. And then the eyes uh, glow red. But before I light them up and show you that, what I'll do is I'm just going to cut away and then show you how I wired it up because uh, it was pretty tough. Again, this was a resin model. All the new ones come out are going to be plastic. This is one of the original and the resin. <coughs> and it was solid piece, so it was a lot of drilling and pulling of wire and stuff, so it wasn't a um, easy thing, and I would say it was more of an advanced uh, LED job. So uh, let me cut away and I'll break this down, kind of show you how I wired it up, and then I'll uh, light it up and throw it on the turntable. So I will be right back. All right, so here's my uh, Leviathan broken down into its component parts uh, as it is now. Uh, once it's complete, <coughs> of the shoulders and uh, the shoulder guards at least will be glued in place right now just for ease of painting and uh, working with it. I haven't final attached anything. Uh, but I just wanted to quickly go over how I uh, did the lighting on the torso here. And uh, then I'll show you the head. So on the <coughs> torso, this was a solid piece of resin, so which presented some challenges to begin with. Uh, so this whole piece here was a solid. These are separate. These actually come off. Uh, but the torso itself was solid. I'll just take these off here. These are just pieces of cotton, and I airbrushed a little bit of gray onto. Now, as you, if you look down the smokestacks, you can see the LEDs. And uh, what it ended up doing, the trickiest part of this, well, the whole thing was kind of tricky, but uh, probably the toughest part of this was running the wire through here and into the torso. Uh, it's very tight tolerance. As you can see, the LED is almost the same uh, width as the stack itself. So the first thing I had to do was 
drill down into the stack, being careful not to come out the sides or the bottom. And then I had to uh, look on the bottom here. You can see the where it makes this right angle into the torso. Then I had to drill in through this this way, meet up with a hole in here, and then feed the wire. <coughs> excuse me, the wire through. Now, what was hard is because well, other than drilling it and not breaking through. It was getting wire to make that kind of right angle turn so it would go into the torso. Um, took took quite a bit of figuring before I was able to do it. Ended up just putting a string in here, then using a small, uh, sh I have a small electronics vacuum that I uh, put on the other end to kind of suck the string through. And then on the string I put a small piece of wire and then went up gradually until I got to the uh, actual width of the wire I was going to use to on the LEDs. So it took a couple hours, I would say, to really get that because you're know, dealing with things like the string or a wire breaking and you really couldn't connect them too solidly because then it wouldn't make that turn. So uh, <laughs> that was a lot of work and really a pain to do. Um, so that got me the wires into the torso and I'll just I haven't glued this side piece on yet, so let me uh, take that off, and you can kind of see. I put this on a drill press because, like I said, this was a solid piece, and I put a. This is a half inch hole. I put a half inch bit all the way through the torso, so it came out this side here, and inside you'll see where the wiring is. You'll see a little circuit board. The circuit board actually the. LEDs I used in here came out of one of those little flickering votive candles. So I wanted to keep that flickering effect. So I, there's actually two small circuit boards stuffed down in here, and that's what allows these to flicker. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Apologize for my coughing. I'm getting over a cold here. Um, so yeah, I have two small circuit boards that just fit in there yeah, along with the wiring. And the other tricky part was figuring out where to put the battery because again um, these are <coughs> excuse me using a three volt battery and uh, what I ended up doing so I'll take this off here you'll see this is actually the battery here on this side and you'll see the, the two wires coming out here and the reason I did did it this way because in order to turn them on and off it's just rotating the uh, arm here so you'll see by turning it forward it, it turns on the lights and then turning it back turns it off so I have there's two wires here one for each LED and they are attached to this piece by a small piece of uh, sheet metal and that, that contacts on the front of the battery you'll see I have a piece of tape on the battery that's when the so that the tapes is, is between the battery and the connectors here so that that allows the turn it on and off so when I turn it forward and the metal touches the battery it comes on when you turn it back and it touches the tape it breaks the connection and the lights go off so <coughs> that's how I did the torso this took couple of days of figuring and planning and trying to figure out the best way to do it. Uh, if I had to do it again, I'd probably do something different with the battery. Overall, unless you're looking for it, you're not going to see it, but it does push the side out just a little bit, um, but not so bad. <coughs> now the head, the head was also a solid piece of resin, so it um, took some doing as well. And what I ended up doing on here is I drilled a hole in the back and then had to drill through the eye slots very carefully so that I didn't uh, cut into the slot. And it was it's, it's tough because these are rectangular. And obviously, you know, drill bits are round. So it was drilling down until I met this hole because this hole goes all the way up to the front so it's making sure I don't break through again on the front here and then angling the 
smaller drill bit through the eyes till I met this here and then taking a file and scalpel and squaring off the corners and everything. And this is actually a pretty straightforward approach on the uh, LED and battery. Because again, this was uh, a little tricky. So I have a smaller battery here. I just put a hole in a little post on it so it'll hold it in place. And then two slots, one for the negative side of the LED and then the other for the positive. So then this just sits in there and when this bends over and makes the connection, the eyes light up. And the LED itself is just pushed into the hole. It's actually a square, square LED. Why not square? It's not round. Pull that out. And that's the LED. So this fits into the hole nicely. Put the negative side into the slot here. Put the battery on. Then you make the connection and uh, it lights up. So basically, this unfortunately I couldn't find a good way to uh, do it on a switch. So if I were to do this again, I'd uh, probably run the wires into the torso and run them off the same switch. Uh, but the way it is now, you just have to attach this and then put the torso on separately. And then there's a magnet uh, on the torso and the chest plate that connects them and lights up. So that was just, just want to do a quick overview because I know people have asked uh, in the past how I've uh, done certain lighting projects. I'm sure the question will come up again. So just wanted to go over that quickly, how we did that. So <coughs> what I have left to do is, <coughs> excuse me, trying not to cough here. Um, I have to finish up the shield and then <coughs> the paint itself. I have to do some more. <coughs> I've got the base in there and the some shading and the rivets and <coughs> some of the weathering done, but I have to a little more weathering to do on this. Um, I've already got the joints and the kind of the grease effects done on the joints. Um, but I have a few more <coughs> little odds and ends. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> a few more odds and ends to do before I feel it's at a point where I can stop. I'm going to hold off on saying the point of when it's finished because as I've said in my other videos I don't feel like anything I do is ever finished as there's always more that can be done but at some point you just have to say it's enough and then move on so uh, yeah that's just a quick overview on how that was done uh, hopefully that was useful to some of you uh, what I'll do now is I'll put it all together and kind of show you what it looks like with the lighting effects uh, on and then throw it on the turntable See you in a second. And here we have the uh, Leviathan with his lights on. You see the eyes and the smokestacks there. And on the smokestacks, I don't know if you can pick it up on the video, but the lights are actually flickering a little bit since they were taken from one of those electronic votive candles. It's not quite dark enough to see it uh, very well. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's what's happening there. And then, of course, the eyes are lit up. <coughs> so, overall, I think the effect came out pretty well. You can see the uh, glow in the eyes. And, uh, so, I was pretty happy with how it came out overall. Take a look at the back a little more here. So it's, it's a little too light out right now, but maybe I'll try.
try to do some more video later on. It's a little darker so you can see it, but there you can see the flames in the back. You may be able to see the flickering a little better. Let's see, maybe if I zoom in a little bit, we'll get a better look in the lights here so you can see the flickering. I think you can see it better in the light there. So yeah, when it's a little darker, it's a little more impressive looking. So yeah, the things I have left to do, it's uh, really just got kind of a base coat down. I still have to do some work on the armor. Weathered a little more. <clears throat> that gives you a good front view of the eyes there. So I gotta put some more uh, probably do some transfers on the chest and arms. Uh, the most of the basic work is done. Still have to do the shield on the sword arm. <clears throat> but yeah, so I think what I'll do is I'll throw this on the turntable, give it a couple rounds, and uh, see you in the next video. Take care.